With countless cars out there, picking one can be a dizzying process. So today I've gathered Sir Zach of Shooting Cars to uh, engage in a little friendly or not friendly debate about which ones are the best. Briefly before we begin, um, Zach, if you would like to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. My name is Zach. I run the Shooting Cars YouTube channel. I do car reviews much like Tyler, um, but I take a look at all cars from all years. I've done as old as 1928 as up to the modern stuff. I like pretty much anything with four and sometimes three wheels uh, and a propulsion device. So if you're interested in that stuff, it's shooting cars. Yes. Sorry about the other search results that will probably <laughs> come up with. Don't that. type it into Google. Like, click a link or something uh, or type in shooting cars and then the name of a car or else you're going to get a lot of Russian guys shooting at limos. So um, apologies in advance. Let's get into the picks. You have to buy a compact car. You want something to use daily. What is your first thought? We're going to go off of vehicles largely that we have driven. Yeah, just to get um, the best experience. If there's something else that you like want to mention, because there's some that like I've driven like the previous version yeah. or just been inside it. I was like, okay, this is an honorable mention. Three two, one, Mazda, Mazda 3. three. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I, I was, was staring like, <laughs> at my own Mazda 3 that I own across the way. I, yeah, it's still, even in 2024, it is showing its age a little bit. The mm -hmm. model debuted in 2019, which I have a 2019. You can't see it on camera. I'm literally staring at my own 2019. God, it's beautiful. It still has one of the most premium feeling interiors. Mm -hmm. I know that the 2.5 liter is reliable. It's the same unit that they've been using the last 10, 15 years. And I've talked to all the techs. The naturally aspirated ones are amazing. They go 300,000 miles pretty regularly. I had, we did that whole issue video on your channel, which is yeah. doing pretty well for you, by the way. If you watch the video, it's all minor stuff. It's like paint, mm. plastic chipping. I, the AC, AC, the, the the AC, AC uh, stopped working on the way home from that video, but then it, I hit a pothole and it worked again. Yeah. So I think the trap door got stuck. It's sad to see it creeping up in price. Now to touch all-wheel drive with the Mazda 3s, you're looking like 30. The reason why the Mazda 3 wins for me is largely same reasons, but also um, I haven't driven the Honda Civic. I cannot get a hold of a really? damn Honda Civic. But that would probably, like whenever I'm looking at one to buy, I've driven the CRV and the HRV, which use the same platform, have the same. It's 99% it, the same. It yeah. really is very similar from, and I've sat in it. And I think if I were in the market for a new car, that's the one that I would recommend to most people just because the back seat is much yeah. bigger. Yeah, um, that's the big downside of the Mazda too. Too. And with, manual transmission. with these cars? There are a lot of goofy ones They're driving so by. Cool. Since I got sidetracked, I'd like to add that Honda has consistently found a great balance between soft and sporty suspension. The steering in products like the HRV and CRV is precise with a little bit of feedback, and the tactile feeling, simple interior is hard to argue against. You can get the manual on the Mazda 3, it's only on front wheel drive. It's a lovely manual transmission, yeah. but the deal breaker mm -hmm. for me was the all wheel drive, which Honda Civics mm -hmm. don't come in. The Corolla, I think, is starting to get all wheel drive. Hybrid only. Hi hybrid, because they just put the electric motor at the back. Um, so that, that was a big selling point for me. Yeah. So that's why it's my pick. The premium trim with the manual is awesome. I just wish, and it would take, it would sweep it for me if they would offer it in the lower trims because it's like $31,000. It's now. weird because they used to. The last generation, you could get a base manual with the two oh. liter. Oh, yeah. that was beautiful. smaller engine though. I know, yeah, but you could get Beyond it for like engine. 20 grand. Yeah, you can get it for oh. like a yeah, hot and ready pizza. Midsize? Yes, sir. Three, two, one. Honda Subaru. Accord Sport Hybrid. <laughs> Subaru Legacy. Okay. No, no, that's good. I I like the Legacy. You do. It's getting old though. It is. It is getting. It old. It doesn't excite me anymore. It's weird because it's kind of Subaru's luxury car. It kind of is. They, they have some really nice interior options on on the Legacy. Mm. I've always liked it. I haven't driven one in a little while. It it doesn't wow me anymore. It really is a. Uh, it's not about wowing at all. I mean, outside of the the turbo does does catch me yeah. off guard. That thing is quick. It's just really comfortable, and the seats yeah. are great. And you can get the ones with the thigh extension that give you like great thigh support if you're tall. It handles still pretty well for how soft it is so yeah. that's why i wouldn't call it a boat right. honda accord sport hybrid why do i like it so much thank you so much for asking uh i was driving on the highway doing 60 
and I was averaging 51 miles to the gallon. I can't beat that. Now, over the whole drive, I ended up averaging like 40 or something. Comfortable, spacious, nice to drive. They're not terribly priced. I want to say 29 or 28. Editing Tyler will throw that in there. But the Subaru Legacy, the kicker is that it's all-wheel drive. And if you get the base trim, it's still technically 25. It's a great I, Yeah, if I, if I had a pick of anyone, I'd probably take the Honda Accord Sport Hybrid. But... Mm-hmm. If I'm paying, <laughs> then yeah, I mean, that's, t- I mean, that's at least the one that I drove, I want to say it was like 34. I think it was a pre-production one, so they didn't have exact numbers. That's but really good though. 34 is like I know, but it's almost 10 grand more than what you're a looking basement. at. Yeah. Yeah. It so, depends on what people need. Of course. Um, I think the Accord is better though. It could win two awards actually. Um, best car for under $40,000 or really just your pick. For under 40 grand, what is the first thing you would jump to? Three, two, one. Super Toyota Cross Prius. Track Wilderness. <laughs> I think we took we went Cross Track Wilderness. Well, okay, I okay. loved it. I really, really loved it. And I I kind of knew I was going to. Um, I just drove the 2024 two weeks. No, last week. Mm-hmm. I drove it last week. Oh. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, I think for what you get for 37,000 is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, genuinely, I, I think I will own one at mm-hmm. some point. The cross trek wilderness, maybe not like the most like physical, the most car that you're going to get for the money. Right. But it's just like, it's the right size. It's still really comfortable, extremely capable. Above the, the regular cross trek, it gets a beefed up rear diff. It gets more ground clearance. It gets better tires. Mm-hmm. It gets the 2,000 extra pounds of towing capacity, which was a big deal for me because I'm like, 1,500, I mean, that's not even going to pull me in my lunch. Mm-hmm. But then you throw in, I think, it, yeah, it was 3,500 pounds. Yeah. That's an aluminum trailer with a Mazda RX-7 on the back. Like, that's, I would not tow that. <laughs> I would not tow that. Be... Because I think it looks a lot better. I actually like the look of it. I like driving them, too. It gets mm-hmm. the 2.5 instead of the 2 liter. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it, I was genuinely shocked, and maybe just because it's on my mind right now because I drove it you know, a week ago. Um, but that would be my pick. What did you say the Toyota Prius for under 40? Yes. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best compact vehicle because it does cost a little bit more. Um, so comparing it to like a Civic or Corolla isn't exactly fair. But, and it's also harder to find. So I also kind of leave it out of like yeah, best yeah, value of because of that. But 50 plus miles to the gallon and it has more than enough power. And then it also handles so much better it's actually fun to drive um seats are comfortable good tech and also personality sport compacts for thirty thousand dollars ish i realized after i like asked or sent you the question so that you could prepare a little yeah. bit um there's not really you got like the jetta gli and you got mine's like, like the, 31 two i know exactly what it is oh it's gonna be the same all right, all right ready Three, two, one. Honda, Honda Civic, Civic SI. SI. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, this is another one, though. I can't, actually, I can't really say it because I haven't gotten the chance to drive it. I really like it. Honda's always done a very good job with it. Um, the shifter is still annoying. I don't like modern Honda shifters because mm-hmm. they have a delay valve in them. It punishes you for trying to shift really quick. Oh. Um, all recent, since like 2016... Hmm. Civic SIs have done this and it's really annoying and that holds over to that um, but I think it's a really well done package and for 30 grand Can't it's re- it. I, I think the one that I drove was stickered at like 31 something um, it, it's it's a really solid choice that was one that I contemplated buying when I was getting this but they were marked up so commonly that I couldn't really even like it wasn't even an option I'm um, curious how you'll like this in the winter with some snow um, I've driven the, it in some snow. Because the is, SI will great. fall flat on its face in the snow. That That is an issue. But Indiana, I haven't, we haven't even gotten, I haven't driven this through snow this year. So from what I've driven for that $30,000-ish, yeah. the Subaru WRX. So only reason, it's worse in most ways. I will give it that. But all-wheel drive is big. Um, and it is quicker, like notably quicker. I've driven the 10th gen SI. Yeah. Um, the I, new WRX is definitely quicker. And I really there. like the new WRX. It's just that I've driven all the previous ones. Oh? They were so much better. 
the oh. the new WRX feels like it feels like a washing machine to it's, me. It it, it, it's very like here's the car; it goes forward. The old Subarus they used to bark and snarl and had giant hood scoops, and they kind of punished you in weird ways. And it felt like the it felt like it was a conversation where this is just like I'm typing in commands. Yeah, if that makes sense. That. So, um, but I, I really like the car. Yeah, but just comparing it to like what it used to be, like it mm-hmm. feels like they just pulled the soul out of it, which they probably did to make ends meet. It. I'm hoping that they can, like, make the steering just a little bit, like, provide a little bit more feedback. They have that dual pinion setup, which does do a little bit. Yeah. Um, it is, like you said, it's precise. You tell it what to do, and it does it. Um, the suspension also, it doesn't communicate as much through, but in the return, it is really comfortable. Like, yeah. I drove the previous generation, the 2020, and it was much more hardcore. It definitely punished you. The transmission was also much more, cl- like, not clunky, like, from a feedback aspect, like shifter, it felt similar. They kind of feel like you're uh, dragging your uh, hammer yeah. through gravel. Yeah. But uh, it was much harder to just shift smoothly mm. or take off. It is a more forgiving car. I really think that the WRX is great, but it would be much better if an STI existed because now we're all like, well, this is our, our STI. And it, I don't think it yeah, can ever exactly. deliver in that aspect. I'm excited to see what you say for the next one. Honestly, I think the shout out though, VW GTI. That would be That's one a good that, honorable mention, yeah. If I didn't live in a place with snow, honestly the GTI would probably be my it could beat the, the Civic SI too. Wait, did I you mean, say GTI or GLI? GTI. The GLI is a better value. Okay. The GLI is a great value. I I, I like the GTI. I, I can't stand the buttons on the inside. That is, but the Golf R was close to my next answer, but it's not. It's not. Uh, okay. I really like okay. the Golf R, but well, that that'll get us into the Sport Compact then for fifty grand. Fifty grand. All right. Which again, I was teetering the line, and I'll say what my choice would have been if I had a few extra bucks. I okay, I but think under I know fifty grand. Under fifty grand, and now this doesn't need to necessarily be forty nine 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 five. Right. But, um, yeah, without further ado... Whoa, wait, 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 wait. I have a car in mind that's 54. Is that too much? If you had a $50,000 budget and then you were like, you know what, is this worth an extra $100 a month for me? Oh, then and, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, okay, so I'll do that one. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Acura Integra Type S. Okay. That's a... I knew you were going to do Integra Type S. It's my car. It's my favorite car of the year. It's my favorite press car I've ever gotten. I fell in love with this thing. I had, like, decent hopes about it. It blew all of them out of the water. It drives phenomenal. Looks great. They gave it in the, not boost blue. It was a really good blue that they gave me. And it does everything that a Civic Type R does. But it doesn't make you look like a child. Ah, that's... The Civic Type R has all these different wings and splitters and the freaking red seats that are an eyesore. I... It's okay. Your frontal lobe's still developing, and it's fine. But <laughs> the, it's just so much like, ah, Civic Type R, I have to have the T-shirt and the headband. The Acura Integra Type S, I drove my classy friends around. It was nice. I felt like an adult. Yeah. Where the Civic Type R, when I drove it, actually, funny enough, the same week, I just, I, I, I loved it equally, and I think it's more capable on track, even though it has five less horsepower. I would take the Acura Integra type. That, like, genuinely, if I were to buy a new car right now, I would figure out a way to finance that. That is... I Okay. I, I, I respect and that. It, good one. But I also do want to add a slight asterisk, if you can find one. I've only seen one in person that wasn't the press car that I had. And also the Type the type R, too, is still really rare. I saw one at the dealership that was in town. This was only a couple months ago, so this is, it's still been out for almost a year. Yeah. And they were asking $60,000 in Indiana. The GRs, I like this car a lot, mm-hmm. but if I'm going to spend $50,000... Where I'm sitting, I want it to feel like fifty thousand. Oh yeah, and this is what, this does not. No, not a chance. And so I was kind of thinking, like, what is the car that I would buy for? Like, it can be under price. I would not. After owning this, I bought this for the channel, and you know, I was willing to to be a first adopter. I called thirty places, and the cheapest I could get was two thousand dollars over. 
And so I was like, well, I guess this is the experience of buying it. In my head, I'm like, I bought it for the channel. I bought it for the channel. I bought it for the channel. Okay. Um, because, yeah, if I don't think I would recommend this. Someone pay markup on this car yeah. because it doesn't feel, it does feel like a cheap car, but that's kind of the point. So for $40,000, though, I think you're buying, a, a, if you just want, like, a performance hatch, you want something that feels uh, like the cars that, like, the Evo and the STI, yeah. just something that is a regular vehicle that is insanely quick for what it is, yeah, yeah. GR Corolla. Um, and I just can't justify 40, 45 grand if you got, like, spared by the Lord yeah. to get a Civic Type R at, at MSRP. Or, yeah. um, I mean, even $55,000, it is a great car from what I've seen, and I loved it. I just, front-wheel drive, uh, fifty five grand. Ah, oh, man, that payment, it gets crazy. The taxes, yeah. ah, <laughs> it's just so yeah. much to think about. The forty grand to hurt me, but oh, one hundred percent. No, and 40, and you're not going to yeah. touch an Integra Type S for under sixty. Subcompact crossover. Okay, mine. We we have the same one, I'm sure. All right. Um, I don't know if we do. Oh, maybe not. Actually. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Toyota Mazda Corolla Cross Track. Or not cross. <laughs> I said cross. <laughs> Toyota Corolla Cross the Hybrid. They're the same thing. Um. Okay. Mazda CX thirty. Okay. I. I have another one, but, like, let me hear what yours is. So I have a Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid at home right now. It's my press car for the week. Blue? No. Oh? It's the most disgusting shade of yellow yellow and green that you will ever see. It is split pea baby diarrhea color. (laughs) But it's really nice to drive. It it drives like this. Obviously Mm. not manual and turboed, but, like, the The dynamics, the steering. (sighs) I like it a lot. It it feels very nice. It's a good size. It gets great fuel economy. It's just hideous. The Corolla Cross Hybrid in particular, I was... That was, like, close to making this. Because the gas mileage that you get from it and the power are great. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're well over 40 miles to the gallon if you're you're just easy on it. The EPA rating is, like, right around 40. Um, I think but it's 43. If you don't have ears, it's great. Yeah. The yeah. CVT is. Though it's it is terrible. The ECVT, which is nice. <laughs> okay, okay. The ECVT doesn't have any of the reliability. It's a completely different mechanical. I know. People it's always so get nice. They're like, it's so different from a regular CVT. And I'm like, I don't care. It still sucks. It does sound like it. But yeah. I, I do love it only because. Um, it can change ratios pretty fast, but it uses a planetary gear set yeah. instead of, like, um, just belts and shit. Well, it chains most of them, actually. They're not belts So why'd anymore. you say the CX-30? The CX-30, because, it, uh, for me personally, if I'm buying a, an SUV, um, it's the most fun to drive. It's just a Mazda and, 3 that's lifted. Yeah. I really want to see if I oh, can... It has, more, it has a little bit more cargo space. Oh, cargo? Yeah. Leg um, space? No. No, yeah, no, no not, not any more leg space. No. I think if I was recommending one out to more people, Subaru Crosstrek. Interesting. Um, the Corolla Cross, I just think, feels a little bit... I live with a Corolla. Yeah. It feels a little bit too cheap, and I don't like... For me, the well, The steering, one I have right now, though, is like 34 or something like that. Which, 34 grand... For thirty four grand with the CX thirty, you're getting like yeah, you're getting almost head up turbo, display. You're getting yeah. like all that. You're getting crazy yeah. stuff. That's a good but point. For the for the Corolla Cross, you're just getting. I mean, it still feels. I mean, you have yeah. leatherette, but it feels cheap. Um, the hybrid is just the the saving grace for that because it's such a good powertrain. Yeah. Um, for what that purpose is, great efficiency, good passing power. I, I think the next category will have the same one. Um, Compact crossover. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, three, three, two, two one, one. Mazda Honda. CX-5. No, Honda CRV. No. Okay. Oh, that that's a new CRV right there. That's a 23 or 24. Well, In the they flesh. sell 300,000 of them I a know. year. So, and that's also a Challenger with fake louvers on it. CX-5, it's just better. Okay, so here's my reasoning. Have you driven a CRV? Yes. So... I've driven the hybrid and non-hybrid of the new body style. The steering? Shooting cars on YouTube. The steering... Um, not as it's not going to be as communicative. It doesn't build up in the same you know weight like the CX-5. That there's nothing that mm-hmm. can beat the CX-5 mm-hmm. in terms of fun. But Gosh, darn right. the seats 
and the CRV are so much better. What is, is wrong with your body? You have this beef with seats. Because that's what I'm... Okay, 90... You're all legs. I'm all 90, torso, I so I don't care. 90% of the time when you're, you're driving a vehicle, you're not going around corners, yeah, what's but that? you're sitting in the damn seat. You know what you are? You're that picture of John Lennon. He's walking with his feet out. Have you seen this picture? Google it and put it in and post. That's you! I feel attacked. Daddy long my, legs? Um, the CX-5 was my favorite until I drove the new CRV. Okay. Only because the CRV maybe it doesn't handle as quite as well, but the seats, it's what everyone's going to come in contact with. The back seat, if you're buying a compact crossover, you probably care about that. Tons that, more back seat space. Way Tons more. more. Um, and the hybrid. The hybrid is like such a great option. If Mazda just added a little bit bigger back seat, a hybrid powertrain that was like somewhat good because the hybrid powertrain in the Hondas is great. Let me introduce you to the Mazda CX-50 that they're supposed to add a Toyota hybrid system to in a couple of years. It, it, people have been saying that for I know, I know. <laughs> My next one's going to shock you. These three tips have left doctors baffled. <laughs> doctors uh, hate this guy. <laughs> two row midsize SUV. Three Two, one, Toyota Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 by You're going to have to explain yourself, sir. Go for it. Reliability out of the question. <laughs> Interior space was wonderful. It had the, uh, a passenger screen in front of it we talked about in my video. It was very fun, very intuitive. The passenger gets to watch movies and play with the cameras and stuff. It's really cool. <laughs> Subway surfer. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I can focus on the highway. The interior was great. Great features. The hybrid, the plug-in hybrid system. Hear me out. Okay, how many miles of range does that have again? Shut up. <laughs> The crossover is seamless. Okay. Toyota cannot figure out their crossover. I have the Corolla Cross Hybrid at my house right now, and I was sitting in the driveway with my girlfriend last night. We're chatting, you know, we're talking, and then all of a sudden, boom! It's like it, it, it. You have to like stop like talking so it can do its thing. The four by e. I didn't even notice when it was switching. Great driving experience. Plugging it in was super easy. You get like 23 miles, I think, of range EV. That's the main reason. And like I drove it like 18 and it was out of battery. Like yeah. it, it's not really that. But, but I wanted to do something different or else this whole list was going to be Mazda Toyota. I, so fair, fair. I, I, I do I, think I you should that. give it a look. Lease one. Don't buy one. Uh, lease it. Love it for a couple of years and... Give it back. I haven't driven the Grand Cherokee, so I, I wasn't going to hate on you too much. Toyota 4Runner for me, I, I do... You can definitely tell where I, I fell like, in love with the, to. the Forerunner. It's... They dropped it off in my house. It was construction cone orange. I literally asked Toyota for that car just so I could help a friend move. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's going to be it. I'm not going to touch it otherwise. You couldn't get me out of that car. Mm -hmm. I was driving it everywhere. It's... I loved it. It's just it's outdated, but I love it. Yeah, it's got, a, it's got a lot of charm to it. And everything like that you... Like even the big gated shifter, like it just... Feels nice and solid. Yeah. And, uh, for the money, it's not like, you know, you're getting a whole lot of features or anything, but you can go anywhere in it. And as long as you're fine with it being slower and getting awful gas mileage, yeah, it's yeah, good. It's great. I'm um, ready for three row. Are you ready for three row? Okay. It's not going to shock you. No, it's not going to. I think we're going to have yeah. the same one. All right. Three, two, one. Mazda, Mazda CX-90. CX yeah. yeah. Okay. Inline six is wonderful. There are plug-in hybrid options. I haven't driven them, but there are plug-in hybrid options. Mm -hmm. I think it's really refined. I think the interior felt really, really nice above what Mazda's already doing. I found <laughs> out, you know, the shifter in it. That's all new. That all new shifter. Eight speed wet clutch. Well... Yes, it has a new transmission, but the, the actual shifter itself, you know how they switched the design of the shifter? Mm -hmm. That's not new. That's in the Mazda MX-30 EV. This was really close for me. Um, there were some other things that I wanted to consider, but yeah, how it drives the steering, oh, mm, mm. it kind of reminds me of the CX-5. It's also worth mentioning that with some compromise at six foot three, I could sit in each row. I'd advise a Grand Highlander if you want more space and care less for driving dynamics. I think we'll have the same next one. So this one, our favorite Grand Touring car. 
Three, two, one. Lexus, Lexus LC five hundred convertible. Oh, you going convertible? I, I've, okay, I did drive the convertible only too, but I think oh, I'd probably yeah. personally go with the coupe. But let me know why. Why? why uh, no. Why LC five hundred? Why would you ever buy a coupe of that car? Only reason I like the LC five hundred convertible. I drove it on the highway. It's not that noisy, but I think with the coupe, it would be really quiet, and that would just be nice to. Like, yeah, who cares? Put the top down but hear that five liter V eight. You got a point. You got that a point. Was okay. what, that's what I hate about the RCF track edition, which had the same engine. I'm like, mm-hmm. what did they do to the exhaust note? It's not there. Oh, it's not in my ear because there's a roof. Yeah. I put the top down on the LC five hundred and oh so good. You know what? Actually, yeah, you may be right. Actually, you may convince me on that one. Maybe I would go convertible. It just a, I guess it would depend on like what I'm doing with it. Because primarily, yeah. I'm I do drive on the highway, but not like that much. I guess if I was like a traveling businessman, yeah, then I, would probably I want to try. In the coupe. press fleet, they have a coupe that's the V6 hybrid. Oh, that would be so stupid. But I would want to drive it to see if it's as stupid yeah, as I think. That, that's how but, I am too. I'm curious if we match on the next one. We're not gonna. Actually, we're going to match. Damn it. Ready? Three, two, one. Toyota GR86. Okay. Why Toyota GR86 over the MX-5? I I think genuinely part of it is I've driven every single model year of the MX-5. Personally, I'm just kind of over. Like, I I love those cars dearly. But, like, I'm not over it. It's just, like, I, I had a GR86 for a week. You couldn't get me out of that car. I would t- the Integra Type S is nicer to live with, uh-huh. but in a little chuckable sporty car, the GR86 is hard to beat. And, and it's new. the The ND Miata still has the infotainment system from 2016. Okay, fair fair points. I haven't driven a Porsche 911. These are things that I've, we've driven for don't, the most don't part. Say that. Don't say that. But actually, I no, just, a I base model Carrera, I would take a Miata over like a base model Carrera. That's what I'm saying. If we start getting into like the turbos and stuff, then... But, but even for me, like if I'm just, I want to have as much fun as possible with a car, you can take it to the track. There's so much product support. If something breaks, you're like, instead of, oh my God, I've got to go to Porsche and it's going to be $5,000. Yeah, send to it stuff. off to Germany to get it fixed. Yeah. You can just do it yourself. Um, yeah, 100%. I, I do like the... I've... I love Miatas, like I'm yeah. not, but like for this list, I, I thought it'd be fun to throw the GR in there. That's a good one. And I you mean, got a back seat that you can't really use, but it's storage. That was the thing, storage. That was nice. I kind of liked having a hard top again for noise. Yeah, for me, I'm the opposite. Um, I I was dropping that top every time. The steering is good. The shifter is glorious. The yeah. engine is like nice and high revving. You can kind of read what the body's doing, like the chassis. It's just it's communicating everything to you in terms of... Have you driven the GR86? Yes. Interesting. Okay. The GR86 feels sharper, honestly. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit less of that body roll, Mm -hmm. Um, but... I the the big reason why again my biggest priority priorities reliability it's not bad but if Miata's I'm buying better. a car like that and I'm going to track it a lot Miata's the, better reliability reliability but also like on the track in particular um, oil starvation has been a big issue with the GR86 and not from the uh, RTV that's not good either they've been documenting it with putting oil sensors at on different ends of the engine and like I think it's right hand turns if you're going right and it, this is weird but it's so well yeah. documented um if you're doing long right handers it'll actually starve the engine um and a lot of uh boom huh. has been happening and so that's a kind of car that i would track a lot yeah. i would definitely track a miata so yeah that's a big i think both too. of those you're gonna do really well yeah dream car now this is gonna change my answer does it count if i've already driven one Oh, no, you can drive it. It's whatever. Three, two, one, Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Oh, okay. I like the 991.2 911 GT3 RS. I drove one in Kermit Green. PDK, though. Yes. Here's the thing. PDK is the best automatic transmission there has been. That is true. That is true. I guess for my dream car, I just, I love to be able to do it myself, but, and that's why the ST for yeah, me, because it's like, fair. I think if I remember correctly, a little bit less like insane as the RS, um, more subtle, but 
Still the four liter manual transmission. Yeah. Uh, beautiful spec too. Just yeah. I, I, I did want to say honorable mention because I've driven a GT3 RS. If it was cars that I haven't driven, one, two, three, Lexus LFA. That is actually a great. Best that is a great sounding one. car. Yeah. Have yeah. I told you my story with the Lexus LFA sound? Uh, I think so, right? Tell me it because I do not remember. Uh, so February of 2023, I got COVID really, really bad. Uh, I have a lot of air restrictive diseases i guess i don't uh-huh. and it, when i get bronchitis i get it like to the max where like other people it's like <laughs> i'm like i'm dying so i was literally laying in bed like not being able to breathe on like breathing treatments mm-hmm. like all this stuff and i was having serious anxiety attacks about this i'm like i'm gonna die on this bed mm. what i would do to calm myself down is listen to lexus lfa dino videos and i know this sounds cheap and stupid like it's a joke mm-hmm. I literally had my headphones in and was laying going, <gasps> just listening to the, <laughs> that, that's it. And literally it made me feel better. Oh, I yeah, have yeah. a video bookmarked of like just a compilation of LFA exhaust notes. And I listen to it when I have like panic attacks. You have 10 grand to buy a car. This is, I, I'm specifically making this vague because I'm just curious what you're going to do. Ten grand, you gotta buy a car. Three, two, one, Honda Fit. Oh! Oh my God. <laughs> okay, why the Honda Fit? It's I mean, the best car. It is the best car. Objective. I, I wish they made an all-wheel drive one, but I've driven every generation of the Honda Fit. They're all wonderful. They're all beautiful. I've driven mm. all of them in manual. I drove a 2020. It was great, lovely. Mm. It that is I genuinely that, that is that shocking. I I did not expect that. Um, they're very affordable. All of the generations are good. The very early ones have leaking issues, where like their roofs yeah. leak. Everywhere. But other than that, like they're solid. The one point five liters, great, great cargo space. We were talking about earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah, those seats fold the down. Seats crazy fold down. Flat. We and fit, they fold back up with the magic seat. My friend fit two whole sets of drift spares in the car with the seats folded down. Another time we fit three rotary engines in the back and it wasn't even squatting. You're going to pay more for it compared to basically any of its subcompact right. competitors on the used market, but I think it's you so get worth more it. Yeah. yeah. You do. And I think it genuinely is. I, I've been doing a lot of research and stuff with the older cars that I drive and mm. like this, the sporty hatchback kind of came up in like the late seventies oil crisis. We mm. wanted a fun little car. I think genuinely it took about 30 years, and I think Honda perfected it. They did. And then once they did it, they... Yeah, and then they're like, (laughs) peace, we're going to make HRVs instead. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have fun editing this 100, or not 100, one hour, seven minute recording. Have fun, brother. (laughs) Thank you. Jeez. Well, actually, you know what? Typically, my videos are like 90 minutes. (laughs) Are you serious? (laughs) Holy (laughs) shit. One takes, it's like 90 That's minutes. why you're only putting out two a week. God, I, I know. My well, max, like, if I record 30 minutes of audio, I'm like, this is too much. I know. Sometimes I just, like, think about ending things abruptly. Like, just right 